Life expectancy has nearly doubled over the last century. Today, nearly 40 million Americans are 65 and older. That's why aging well is more important than ever. The difference between aging well and growing more frail and less independent with advancing years has a lot to do with our levels of physical activity. UNC Charlotte Associate Professor of Kinesiology Michael Turner studies the impact of physical activity on the aging process. Specifically, he looks at how physical activity affects cardiovascular function. Really, we want to try and be healthy to try and make sure that the heart can pump well as we get older. Most people would prefer to kind of age gracefully to a point where they're always independent and still living their life uh, free of depending upon other folks. With the heart specifically, when the heart gets thicker and stiffer, it doesn't pump very well, so there's not as much oxygenated blood going to the rest of the body, and primarily, primarily the brain. And it, it doesn't allow us to function very well as we get older, so we become more dependent on folks to help us out with what seems to be sometimes menial tasks. What we're seeing with some, some of our research is that right around the second quarter of the lifespan, so somewhere around 20s to, to early 30s, we see an important time where the, the heart starts to get thicker if we're not being very healthy, we're not regularly active. We also see it changing also towards uh, like the end of the third quarter of the lifespan. So right around where we expect to see retirement or just before our retirement age, around 60, we start to see some changes there as well, where there's an acceleration of this you know, aging process with the heart. But activity tends to slow it down a little bit, not as much as we see in the, in the second quarter of the lifespan. The heart and the musculoskeletal system work together throughout the lifespan. To maintain heart function, it's important to maintain muscle mass as we age. Assistant Professor of Kinesiology Susan Arthur studies the age-associated loss of muscle mass and function known as sarcopenia. Arthur says a number of factors can cause sarcopenia, including lack of necessary nutrients or vitamins in one's diet, chronic inflammation related to aging, decreased protein synthesis within the muscles, and a decrease in the ability of aged muscle to repair itself following injury. What can be done to prevent the loss of skeletal muscle mass and function is simply moving. The um, movement with aging can help delay this onset of sarcopenia and the loss of muscle mass and function because they have stronger muscles that can help um, readily regenerate when exposed to these microtraumas. So the stronger the skeletal muscle contractile apparatus is, the stronger with aging, the stronger one can recover when exposed to injury. Sarcopenia with the with the smaller muscle mass and the pain that can be associated with movement, it's, it's a vicious cycle because the less the folks want to move because they feel the pain, the less they're going to move, which is then going to exacerbate the loss of muscle mass because they're not moving. But also skeletal muscle is an important organ that um, works with other organs such as cardiovascular functions and metabolic functions and maybe even uh, neurological functions. So with poor skeletal muscle mass, that's going to affect cardiovascular problems and can induce um, metabolic issues. And so there is a high correlation with type 2 diabetes and loss of muscle mass that's associated with sarcopenia. Associate Professor of Kinesiology, Tricia Turner, is approaching the musculoskeletal system from the standpoint of orthopedic muscle injury and how seemingly minor injuries can affect the body as a whole. When you have someone have an acute musculoskeletal pathology, and our, one of our primary models we look at is the ankle sprain, is unfortunately about probably 55% of folks who have an ankle sprain don't seek any form of treatment because for that injury. About 60% of people who develop an ankle sprain or have an ankle sprain develop chronic ankle instability. So they have these chronic symptoms of pain, feeling like the ankle is unstable or it's going to give way. And I think that then changes the activity level of that patient or that person. And those changes in those physical activity levels have negative impacts on things like cardiovascular function. And I think that puts that patient at risk, or at least what we see from a research standpoint. So that initial acute ankle sprain that doesn't get probably treated properly turns into this chronic ankle instability, and that really changes their ability to do activity. 
And then that negatively influences cardiovascular function, which then unfortunately puts the patient in a really bad overall health situation when it comes to aging. Through research, teaching, and community outreach, UNC Charlotte's College of Health and Human Services faculty are focused on helping people lead longer, healthier lives. Health assessments, including reliable measurements of body mass index, are available to the campus and greater Charlotte communities. Here at the university, we have what's called a community testing program. In that community testing program, we do risk assessment. So we do body composition testing, we do aerobic capacity testing. Um, those two assessments can determine um, your aerobic fitness and your body composition, so how much fat or muscle you have. So the main equipment that we use is entitled the BOD pod. And the BOD pod is a, a machine where you get in and it's based on air displacement. So you wear minimum clothing and you get in and it's gonna give you um, a calculation of your percent body fat. And that percent body fat is gonna determine if you have a higher risk for diabetes or cardiovascular disease. So we do that testing for body composition for individuals that may want to know the risk assessment or that maybe want to work on a strength training program. So they want to know over time, can they reduce their fat and build up their muscle mass. To learn more about the community testing program or to schedule an appointment, contact the Department of Kinesiology at 704-687-0874.